Truth in History with Charles A. Jennings. Welcome to Truth in History. This is a third in the series of Are the Jews Really Judah? Uh, and the reason why, one of the reasons why I'm doing this series is because some of our Christian brethren are saying that the Jews comprise Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, such as was the division in the Old Testament after the death of Solomon. So everybody that's considered a Jew in the world or at least in the Western world, I assume that's what they're saying, is part of Judah. They make up the tribe of Judah. In the Old Testament, it was two kingdoms, as we know, and the southern kingdom, the body politic, was Judah, living in the land of Judea. And the leadership was started out in the house of David because Judah as a tribe, not as a nation, but as a tribe, was given the mandate of, of governing, of ruling over the house of Israel over all 13 tribes. So it was a tribe of rulership, kingship. And the Lord told Abraham and Isaac that kings shall come out of your loins. So we start today in Genesis chapter 49. And let, let me say this. I pray that this series will be a help. It's not my purpose to just uh, talk negative about any segment of the population. Uh, there's a lot of different groups within, the, within mankind that we could all criticize, but that's not my point. I want to properly interpret the Bible. And I realize that there are places in the Bible and big, a big part of the Bible is condemning wrong, is condemning unrighteousness, is pointing out the dark side of life, Satan, sin, rebellion, that type of thing. So it's, it's in the Bible. And it also exposes evil people. And it's not the most pleasant subject, but it is a subject in the Bible. So we go to Genesis chapter 49, where Jacob is giving his prophecies concerning each tribe. And in verse number eight, it says, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Military, a warrior, kingship, uh, fighting battles. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Somewhat of a chief member a chief tribe of the whole house of Israel. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up, or who shall dare to challenge him and to rouse him up? Because Judah is going to be a great military power. That's what it's saying. And then it says, the scepter, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet 
until Shiloh come. What does it mean from between his feet? It's a Hebrew idiom, meaning that the, there will always be a descendant born of the, of, of the tribe of Judah in rulership and in a governing authority. And between his feet, well, that's where people are born, between the feet of their mother or between the legs of their mother. I mean, it's, it's kind of a, you know, an unpleasant thing to talk about, but yet it's, uh, it's, that's the meaning of that Hebrew idiom. So there will always be a descendant, a child born in the line of Judah and be a king. It says, the scepter shall not depart from Judah nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. And until the Messiah come. Shiloh meaning he to whom the kingdom rightly belongs. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. What people? The other tribes of Israel shall gather around Judah. It's one of the chief tribes. Binding his foal unto the vine and his ass's coat unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth white with milk. So we see where the tribe of Judah as given, was given, that mandate of rulership. Now when we turn to the book of Isaiah, it says in Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 1, there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And upon this rod, the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. That is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. We know that. We believe that. And it says in verse number three, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And his judgment, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. And it goes on to say in verse number four, that someday he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips, he's going to slay the wicked. Now in Revelation, it talks about the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ coming on this great stallion and a sword coming out of his mouth. He's going to slay the, the nations with the breath of his mouth. That's the word of God, not a literal sword. But, you notice in Isaiah chapter number nine, it says of the, in verse seven, of the increase of his government. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to establish it, to order it from henceforth and with judgment forever. So the tribe of Judah must have the tribe of Judah in order to be, if the Jews are Judah, where's the house of David among the Jews? Where is the Messiah among the Jews? Some people say, well, Jesus was a Jew. Well, that has never been proven. He's not a typical Jew. 
that we see today walking the streets of the Western world or the Oriental world or the third world. Jesus was of the house of David. That was a particular family within the tribe of Judah. As we turn to the New Testament and we go to Luke chapter 1. See, one of the characteristics of the tribe of Judah is that they would be a ruling tribe, government, militarily. They would be uh, a tribe where all the other tribes gathered around them. And then they would have amongst them the earthly throne of King David. Luke chapter 1, the angelic message to Mary. For the angel said unto her, fear not, just simply fear not. For thou hast found favor with God, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. Where is the throne of David? Is it in Jerusalem? And if it is, who's sitting on the throne? What modern Jewish person is sitting on the throne? There is no throne there. They cannot, the Jews cannot be Judah because they don't have the identification marks. And then it goes on to say, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom. There shall be no end, just like Isaiah prophesied. Where is there a kingdom of David, a throne of David amongst the Jews? It does not exist. And I do not know why some of our Christian brethren keeps proclaiming that the Jews are Judah and the rest of the world, Christian world, should finance them, send moral support, send military support to them just because they supposed to be, quote, God's chosen people. But folks, that is plainly a myth. It's a myth. Well, we see also in the book of Revelation, near the end of the book, it says in Revelation twenty two sixteen, 16, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you of these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and the morning star. Jesus himself declared that he was of the house of David. Now, how could he be both the root and the offspring? As an offspring, he was David's son. As the root, he was David's God. David's son and David's God, root and offspring. So in 1 Kings chapter 11, 1 Kings chapter 11, in verse number 9, Verse number nine. First Kings 11, verse nine. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel. 
Wherefore, jumping down to verse 11, wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, for as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee and give it to thy servant. Notwithstanding, in thy days I will not do it for David, thy servant's sake. David being his, Solomon's father. But I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. Howbeit I will not rend it away, all, I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe, one tribe, to thy son for David, my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. Now we see this repeated in verse number 32. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. And then in 15.4, we read something very similar. 15.4, Nevertheless, for David's sake, did the Lord his God give him a lamp in Jerusalem to set up his son after him and to establish Jerusalem. Now, why do I read those verses? When Solomon disobeyed the Lord, the Lord said, I'm going to rend the kingdom from you and give it to an enemy that was Jeroboam. But Solomon's son, Jeroboam, took the throne in Judah. And the Lord said, I'm going to give one tribe, not to the house of Judah, but to the family of David. I'm going to give one tribe to the house of David. And what was that tribe? That tribe was the tribe of Benjamin. So it's known as the tribe of light, spiritual light. So that the house of David will always have a spiritual light or guidance or direction in their line of descendancy. When we come to Jesus of the line of the tribe of Judah, of the house of David, Jesus chose disciples. He did not choose Judahites. He chose Benjamites, except Levi. He was probably of the tribe of Levi. And Judas Iscariot, who was probably most likely an Edomite or half Edomite. So we have 10 left. He chose them and imparted unto them Read the latter uh, chapters of the book of John. He's giving them light and understanding. He said, I'm going to breathe on you and you're going to have the Holy Spirit. Because he chose the tribe of Benjamin in accordance to this Old Testament proclamation that the house of David would always have a light to guide them. So when he chose the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul was a Benjamite in continuation of that spiritual light, an impartation of spiritual light and understanding. Where is, number one, the throne of David 
among the Jews? Where is the kingdom of David among the Jews? And where is that spiritual light of Benjamin among the Jews? That spiritual light simply is the gospel, the gospel of Christ concerning the God-man Jesus, his virgin conception and birth, his life, his miracles, his words, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, all these things concerning the gospel is still being proclaimed somewhere in the world by millions of people, but not among the Jewish people. How can someone say, there is Judah down there in modern Palestine in the Zionist state? How can they say that? They're missing a lot of information and about the characteristics and identification marks of the tribe of Judah. Where is the house of David among them? Where is the house of David among them? Do you know it was prophesied in the book of Amos? And as I turn there, the book of Amos, chapter number nine, It says in verse 11, in that day, I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen down and close up the breach thereof. And I will raise up its ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. Go into the book of Acts chapter 15 at that church council. Verse 13, and after they had held their peace, that's talking about the Apostle Paul and his fellow laborers had sown the gospel seeds, the gospel truth among, quote, the Gentiles, which were the other tribes of Israel. And James gets up and he says, men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles, talking about Cornelius, to take out of them a people for his name, and to disagree the words of the prophets as it is written. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build it again and will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called. In other words, a restoration of the house or the tabernacle of David, how? By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God came on the day of Pentecost. Men were energized by the Holy Spirit. Peter, James, John, and the others. And then the conversion of Saul. And God made him an apostle. And they preached the gospel. And they preached it to the Gentiles, which were the other tribes of Israel. Because if you check your history, your anthropology, the ancient world where those men preached 
in the churches of Asia Minor, in Greece, Italy, Macedonia, on up to Great Britain, or ancient Britain at that time, they were Israelites. They were preaching to Israelites, building again the tabernacle of David. Didn't say the throne of David. That belongs to one family. But the tabernacle of David is the restoration of a right relationship with God. It's the gospel. It's salvation. It's the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. It's divine healing, it's holiness, it's righteousness, of which millions of people have enjoyed and been the benefits of. That's the tabernacle of David. Is that among the Jews in Palestine? That's a question. Is that among the Jews in Palestine? No, it's not. So we've got the kingdom of David, the throne of David, and the tabernacle of David. It's not there. So I'm wondering what are some of our brethren thinking? Just because someone calls themselves a Jew, of which in the previous lessons of this series, I went over the fact that even in 1988, the Israeli Knesset had a bill entitled the Return Bill or the Return Act, which they called Who is a Jew Bill. They couldn't de decide who was a real Jew. Is it by race, by culture? by language, by religion. So these Christians among us today, especially the ones broadcasting on these big Christian networks, constantly, constantly talking about the Jews returning back to Palestine proves that they're of the house of Judah. It doesn't prove anything. I'll tell you what it proves. It proves they have a plane ticket and they get there. And it proves that the next thing it proves, and I, I don't mean to have a, a mean spirit attitude, but it proves that there's a lot of ignorant Christians that's never done their homework. Where is the house of David? Where is the throne of David? Where is the kingdom of David? Where is the tabernacle of David? That's among the tribe of Judah and going out from there. Because Jacob said, and your brethren shall gather unto you. And Jesus was of the house of David. Where's Jesus among those people? Where's Jesus? Is that a Christian state? Well, <clears throat> and where is Benjamin among them? Where is Benjamin? Well, and the Redeemer shall come to Zion. The Redeemer shall come to Zion. This series could be 10 lessons long, but I don't want to belabor the fact Neither do I want to bore you. But 
I think these are just some simple things in Scripture that we need to consider. When we consider the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not the nation of Judah, but the house of the tribe, the family. It's very important to get our facts straight. Well, why is it important? Don't you see this upside down world? Can't we see this upside down church world we're living in? When you pass these small churches along the highway and they're flying the flag of a foreign nation. That flag has become like a talisman. It's become a, a magic icon. It's something that it, it's just captivated these Christians that they've got to let everybody know that they're a Christian Zionist because it's a cult. And that's the symbol of that cult. But I want to, and I'm sure many of you, thousands of you, want to know the truth of Scripture and to bring out these things. And it's a twofold sword, two-edged sword, to point out the wrong and to point out the good. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ and His life-changing gospel. Because the Lord Jesus Christ came into my life, however we want to say that. I know that there's a lot of phrases that are debated as to what's the right phrase to say. But I knew the day, the time, and the location where regeneration took place in my life. And my focus ever since then has been the Lord Jesus Christ. I was nine years old in an Assemblies of God church, Miami, Florida, 95th Street, Revival Tabernacle. I remember it well. I'm not perfect. Absolutely not. But we are declared righteous, not by our merits, but by the merits of the Son of God. This one, this one that we call the root and the offspring of David. He's among us. He is among us. Let me point out one more thing as we bring this to a close. Some people say, well, during the Assyrian captivities, the northern kingdom was taken north into Assyria and they crossed the Caucasus Mountains eventually. Correct. So that left all the Jews in Judah. No, it didn't. In 2 Kings chapter 18 and verse number, well, throughout this chapter, it's talking about the captivities of Sennacherib, the uh, Assyrian king taking the children of Israel into captivity. And then it comes to verse 13. Second Kings 18, 13. Now in the 14th year of the king Hezekiah, did Sennacherib, king of Assyria, come up against all the fenced cities of Judah 
and took them. In other words, when it says the fenced cities of Judah, it's here's the land of Judah, so to speak. Here's the city of Jerusalem. He came and took Benjamites and Judahites and Levites from all these small cities that he could conquer and took them with the 10 tribes north. So that means all 13 tribes are represented in the diaspora or the dispersion that went across the Caucasus Mountains into Northwestern Europe. But Sennacherib left the city of Jerusalem. God had a different plan for the city of Jerusalem because there was both good and bad there, good figs and bad figs. He had a different plan for them. So where is the tribe of Judah? Where, are, where is the people of Judah? They're already physically, visibly among the other tribes of Judah. Otherwise, how could the prophecy that Jacob give that your brethren shall be gathered unto you? If the Jews, if the tribe of Judah, the people of Judah, are strictly the Jews, they don't have the gospel. The other tribes are not rallying around them except because of propaganda and threat, but not in righteousness. You see, because Shiloh was among, that is Jesus Christ, among the Judah nation, the Judah people, I should say. And then there's the light of Benjamin. So Sennacherib had to come down and take Benjamites in order for that spiritual light. Whether we like it or not, spiritual light travels with a genetic offspring. It follows. They go together. Spiritual light is implanted into a genetic offspring. Maybe you've never heard that before. But it's, it's an amazing story. And I, I, I just have to bring it to a close somewhere. But just a reminder, if you would like a copy of our magazine free of charge, you just contact us. We'll be more than happy to send it to you. And as I bring this to a close, I want to say I want to give all glory and honor and praise to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the God of the patriarchs, and the God of David, the true God of David, King David. And then I want to give praise and honor unto David's physical offspring, the Lord Jesus Christ. Because as he said to John, I've come to declare these things unto you, to give to the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. God bless you and God bless your offspring, your children, your household, and give all glory and praise unto our reigning King, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.